We are live, Mr. Barry. All right, thank you. Uh, the Shreveport County Zoning Board of Appeals has determined that in order to protect the health and welfare of the public and to ensure the presence of a quorum of board members, it is necessary to conduct its regular meetings in a virtual setting. This meeting is being conducted under Louisiana Revised Statute 4217.1. As such, we are limited in what we can consider today under this statute. Only agenda items which qualify under subsections A through D of this statute, which appear on the public notice of today's meeting may be considered today. For public hearing agenda items, if you wish to make a public comment on an application, please indicate as such using the chat feature during the live stream. When prompted by the chairman, any member of the public wishing to comment on a specific agenda item should use the chat feature to indicate which agenda case number you wish to address and whether you will be speaking in opposition or in support. Public comments received in writing prior to the meeting will be read aloud into the record. Before addressing the board, please state your full name, mailing address, and zip code. We will call each case on the agenda in order and hear first from the applicant, then those speaking in favor. 10 minutes are allotted for the principal spokesperson and three minutes for each additional speaker. We will then hear from those wishing to speak against an application. Again, 10 minutes is allocated for the principal spokesperson and three minutes for each additional speaker. One representative of the application may then speak in rebuttal if desired. After hearing comments on each case, the board will then immediately deliberate and vote on that case before moving on to the next case on our agenda. Please note when the board is deliberating, members of the public are not permitted to comment. Members of the public may request a copy of the board's decision on a particular case by contacting our office at 318-673-6480 after 1 p.m. tomorrow, or by accessing our website at shreveportcaddonpc.com. All zoning board decisions on cases within the city limits of Shreveport are subject to appeal to district court. All zoning board decisions on parish cases are subject to appeal to the parish commission. Please note that it is your responsibility to contact either district court or the parish administrator's office about their procedures as related to the matter you are concerned with. Copies of this document and the phone numbers to contact the governing bodies are available at the MPC website, shreveportcaddompc.com. Zoning Board of Appeals values your participation and appreciates your compliance with these guidelines. All right, at this time we would normally move on our minutes from January 20th, 2021. Uh, at this time, I'd like to request for a motion to postpone the adoption of the minutes from January 20th, 2021 meeting of the ZBA until our next in-person meeting. Do I have a motion? I second it. Uh, who, was, who was the motion from? Uh, it was gonna be from me. Okay, Mr. Chair. Ms. Peterson makes a motion, second by Mr. Moss. At this time, uh, I'm going to call the roll. Alan Berry? Yes. Cynthia Pearsons? Yes. Fred Moss? Yes. Marsha Farrell? Brittany Dunn? Doreen Hendricks. Huey he P. Mr. Horn. Can you hear me? I can now. Yes. We have four yes. All right, motion carries. I would now like to request a motion to consider case number 2021 BAC variance pursuant to subsection D of Louisiana Revised Statute 4217.1. As a reminder, consideration of this case in a virtual setting will require a two thirds vote and a majority vote to pass. Do I have a motion to consider this case? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. 
he omitted uh, the invocation of pledge. Uh, oh, <laughs> certainly did. My, my mistake. I'm uh, bear with me. I'm jumping ahead since I read the the, the um, preamble. Uh, Miss Pearson, could yes. I call upon you for an invocation? Yes, sir. Would you pray with me, Lord, how we thank you anew for these moments we have together, Lord. We ask you to bless us as we go forth to make the right decisions concerning the cases at hand. Lord, we ask you would continue to bless and keep the city of Shreveport and the parish of Caddo, our mayor and all of the entities thereof. Bless this board, our leaders, the chairman and all. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you, God. Amen. Amen. At this time, if you would uh, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag. flag. of the United, of the United, United States, States of America. Of America. And to, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. all. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for that correction, Mr. Clark. Thank you, sir. All right, so that brings us to our first case, and I, uh, I have called for a motion to consider, which is a, a new bit of business we need to do in the virtual setting. So if I have a motion to consider, would someone speak for it? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. I motion that we consider the case. And a second. Uh, yes. Do I have I a second, second that? Thank you, Mr. Moore. second. All right, roll call vote, please. Mr. Berry? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Moss? Yes. Mr. Horn? Yes. We have two thirds. Thank you, our motion passes. So that brings us to case number 2021 BAC variants. Applicant is Larry Henderson at 1104 Gooseberry Hill. Is someone to speak for this case? I think the applicant is here and he also- Yeah, has, I'm here. I, I'm here. And I, he also has a presentation to make to the okay. board that I believe he requested it be made prior to him speaking. Very good. Yes. Is he speaking? We're waiting for this uh, presentation to come up. Oh, okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, we can. Well, the video has audio to it and, and it's, I don't hear anything. And I'm sure you guys probably don't either. I'm not, a, I'm not sure. We hear some background uh, ambient noise, but that's about it. Sound. 
I'm actually in fact very proud of the fence. The top of this ladder represents about six feet, and the top of the box represents about eight feet, and it gives an idea of the views that would be blocked from the fence that height. From the midfield side of the property, uh, a lot of people from Pitts coming over uninvited. On January 20th, 2021, this board ran commission for the president of 755 Ontario. They had the intersection of Lime Avenue to raise a three foot fence on Lime Avenue to six foot for the purposes of blocking noise, of clear view to the home, safety, possibly police coming to the home. I'm asking for the same privilege. This small area of this road is a utility box for being compliant with the ordinance. However, this larger area that I'm asking for parents on is the most of my yard. In middle fence, the Peter Macy Park in the trailer out of sight or either take up more of a small view of the utility boxes are. I spoke with some of the residents in the 500 foot notification area. Most of them had no problem with me putting up the fence. A few of them did, but most of them did not. We have a petition where they signed.
Mr. Barrett, staff has advised me that the, the presentation would take six minutes and the applicant would have four additional minutes to make comments. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Henderson, do you have additional comments to make to the board? Yes, I don't know how, if you guys could understand the audio, uh, I didn't understand that good, so. Um, if you don't mind, I, I would like to make comments, but I'd like to kind of run up, give a rough draft of what the audio was supposed to have said. Um, you, have, you have four so, minutes remaining, sir. I hope that Mark Kia is keeping a record of the four minutes. <laughs> but did you, do you yeah. understand? Okay, when, when does my time start? Now. Okay, so in this area, the zip code area, I found that we have 40 offenders registered and several of them are in one home within the 71118 zip code area. Um, so for that reason, and for people not seeing into my home, the same reason uh, noise, the same reasons you approved in January that another citizen could raise his fence from three feet to eight feet along the, I mean, three feet to six feet along the corner a lot of line in Ontario and the photos that you mostly saw were uh, of corner lots facing the road or just a uh, 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 fence facing road six to eight feet tall I'm asking for the same thing not anything unusual I just want to protect my family have the same opportunity protect the family and the community just like everybody else I'm not asking for anything special and if I were to run the fence as the ordinance says, ordinance says off the side of my house, it would make a hardship for me to park with the trailers in the area that was already there before I purchased the home. And the price of this lumber and all this other stuff is constantly going up as I wait to do this. So I just ask you guys approve so I can get, get it done. That's my four minutes and I think I have a rebut. Yes, sir. Is there any comments from the board for Mr. Henderson? Well, since we couldn't hear his video that good in the commentary, I would just like uh, Dax for um, um, to give him extra time, put that in a motion, to give him extra time to, to explain a little bit more because he probably left something out. But if you have a specific question, I think that could be handled that way. Okay. okay. Do you have a specific question for him? Uh, basically, those those pictures that that uh, that you share with us in the, in this presentation, uh, and I guess it's a question for both uh, us and him. We don't know if those pictures are in compliance with our regulations. Those and, and we have uh, do we have any way of knowing those pictures are in compliance with our regulations? To start off with, right. I I would suggest that that while fences exist, Mr. Henderson, they, they may be either out of, uh, in violation or non-complying right now. Uh, they were either there before the UDC was uh, enacted and therefore they are non-complying or they've been built uh, without permission and therefore are, would be a violation. So without knowing each individual address that you uh, showed pictures of, it's hard to compare uh, it's hardly apples and apples. And, and I would say that I think you are asking for something exceptional given the, the frontage of your lot. Um, um, I, I think uh, it, and also given the, the nature of the surrounding neighborhood, uh, for myself, I can speak to the, the Unadilla and Wine Avenue case it was because it was, was not out of character for that section of Wine Avenue. Uh, this would be entirely out of character for your neighborhood. 
um, at a, certainly at an eight foot height. Um, I think it would it would uh, lend your property to look more like a fortress than a than a house in the neighborhood. Um, but Mr. Moss, does that help answer your question? It does. Mr. Okay, Ken. Yeah, okay, so if you ask the question to me. Yes, sir. Um, I, those, some of those pictures are of houses in this area that have six feet fences. In fact, they're in the, some of them are in the 500 foot radius that you guys gave me to go and ask the questions of people. Well, you didn't, that's not why you gave me, but I've made a petition and asked these people, were they okay with it? And the majority of the residents that I talked to said they did not have a problem with me doing that. And in the January meeting, you guys approved for Ontario and Line Avenue to raise this fence from three feet to six feet for noise, for, for people being able to look inside of his home. I, I, I want the same thing. I want to protect my family just like he wants to protect his. And that's all I'm asking for. Give me that same opportunity. I want to raise a, at least a six foot fence on the side of my house so that people cannot look into my home, cannot just walk up to my home. I want the same thing he that he asked for. That's all I'm asking for. I, what I'm asking for is not anything special. I can do something different with the front, but from the side of my house back, just like the guy on Line Avenue, I want the same thing. That's, not, that's what I'm asking for. And those homes on Line Avenue, we have no, re, no way of knowing if they're in compliance or not. They may be in violation. Just like the photos, we don't know unless we research everyone. But Line Avenue and Ontario came to you and asked the question, and I'm coming to you ask the same questions, and I think we have the same situation. Uh, Mr. Chair, Anderson, any more questions from the board? I I do. I have a comment and a question. Yes, Ms. Pearson, you're recognized. Yes, as far as uh. The, the the guy the 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 resident on Ontario, it was a, just for clarity's sake. It was just it was a whole lot different from this. He was basically on the road on Line Avenue, and the people could just literally stand there. Your house is quite a bit from from the from the street from the street view. And my other thing is. Mr. Henderson, have you considered at all the recommendations that that's been put before you? Yes, ma'am. That recommendation again. There's a part, there's a part a area where I park my trailer in the back. If I put my fence there, I would not be able to get my trailer there. And I think the city has an ordinance that says the trailer is supposed to be not open and visible area like that. I'm just trying to enjoy my yard. And you can look into my house from the street. I've done this. I want the same. I don't I want to be in my house protected from from we have a house with offenders registered in this area. And, and I, I don't understand why I cannot protect. I don't understand what the and I'm not y'all haven't voted yet. But what the what I'm getting is is I'm not gonna be able to protect myself as Line Avenue in Ontario. I mean it's no difference. If it's 10 feet, if it's 40 feet, who cannot walk 50 feet to get to my house by looking into it? It's the same. I, I would like to protect my family just like the guy in Ontario. And I, yes, I have considered that, but it, it causes me a hardship. Any other questions from the board for Mr. Henderson? If I may, Mr. Chair, for the sake of clarity to the board, and I didn't give him forewarning, but he's very knowledgeable. I'd just like to ask uh, Stephen Jean to share with you the differences between the two applications for the variance of the fence. Thank he's going totally cold, but uh, I think he'll be able to give you a real good understanding of the differences. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Jean? You're muted, Stephen. I'm, I'm muted, Mike. 
You're muted, Stephen. Oh, I'm trying. Okay. Thank you. So it used to being quiet. Uh, the uh, major differences between these two uh, sites, for one, we're dealing with an area that's inside of a neighborhood. Uh, we're not, we, we, the other site, we dealt with a higher speed traffic that was on a major arterial road. Um, and some of the concerns that were expressed were related to those speeds of that traffic that were going on that, on that road. That is not the case here. We're dealing with a local street where the traffic volumes and speeds are much different. Also, in that particular case, we're only talking about a 10-foot section of fence that, that did not go past the front yard of the house. It did not completely surround the property as this, this one is shown here. So those are the two biggest differences is the fact that it's a situation. The third item, and it's already been talked about, is the character of the neighborhood already had a certain number of fences that was pointed out during the hearing by, by uh, even our chair during that meeting. And we looked, uh, of course, at photographs of what was immediately around it. And it seemed to be more consistent with the neighborhood. As you look at this site, you don't see the same type of, of fencing where it completely encloses the front and side yards in this neighborhood. So those are the major differences between the two and I can go into more detail if you need me to. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Any questions from the board regarding Mr. Dean's comments? No. No. All right. Is there anyone else on the call today wishing to speak for case 2021 BAC? Or against it. Or. Anyone want to wish to speak for this case? Okay. Okay, um, this is Larry Henderson again. He cannot speak in a moment, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Henderson, I'm, I'm asking if anyone else is on the call to speak for your case. I, I heard the question, but I, I okay. <laughs> All right, if there's no one to speak for, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Yes, sir, there's two of us on Brenda Palmer's, um, Stacy Pilokakis, and then Brenda Palmer's here also to speak. All right, so uh, whoever speaks first, please give us your full name. Uh, is your video working? I don't know how to turn it on. Up in the right-hand corner of your little screen, there's three little dots. If you'll click that, and it'll say start video. Okay. I don't know. Did it start? Hold on. Oh, wait, it did stop. I'm sorry. Start. OK. Yeah. I don't know if y'all can see us or not. Do we need to touch share screen? No, no. Unless they have something to share, I guess we can hear them. It's all good. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with audio. I'm not trying to take over the meeting. I'm just saying. If we'll go with audio, if, if you will, uh, the first person to speak, identify yourself, give us your full name and address, please. And you are now recognized. Stacy Pelicakis. My address is 1041 Japonica Lane. I did see on his thing somebody signed for 1041. Japonica Lane saying it's they were okay with the fence. It's not their property. They're my renters. So they should not have any say so whatsoever with the fence thing. Um, most of those pictures that he was showing were fences that were on Main Street, which y'all already pretty much touched on. Um, most of the fence pictures that he showed you were on Kingston of Warner Lucas, which were some of our main roads in our neighborhood. Um, Everybody in our neighborhood pretty much has fences from the backs of their houses to the back of their yards or whatever, not in front. My mom is not at here. She had a doctor's appointment. Her house is the one that was two story with a U driveway directly in front of his house where the vehicle was backing out of. She does not want the fence to go up all the way down that side street either because it's just, it's gonna look ugly from the back of the house. She agreed also for his animals, for his yardage, whatever, that we all agree pretty much the backyard is a backyard. It should be fenced or allowed to be fenced, but we don't believe there should be a fence going out to the front or out to the street on any side of the fence mm -hmm. or being eight foot tall at that, especially, I mean, it's just like way too tall. Um, with all the offenders in the neighborhood also, I mean, our fence is only from the back of our yard 
so people can easily walk up to our windows also if they want to. All the houses are like that in the neighborhood. So I don't see how it would protect him any more than it would protect us because I can't put a fence up around the front of my our yard all the way out. And I have a corner lot and my fence is from the back of my house on both sides to where you can still see the street. There's nothing obstructing any views from coming around the corner or anything like that. Most of us do put up cameras now for protection, which of course he has. But we're all single ladies. Miss Palmer lives at 9339. My mom's 9335 and I'm 1041 Japonica Lane. And we're all single ladies, so we're, we should be more worried about ourselves also with having all these offenders in the neighborhood. But yet we can't, and we wouldn't put up fences in front of our houses. And we don't have guard dogs. He has German Shepherds for guard dogs too. So that's pretty much all I have to say. I think Ms. Brenda wanted to say a few things too. Okay. Ms. Yes. Yes, I'm Brenda Palmer. I live at 9339 Midvale Drive, which is next door to 9335 Midvale, where Ms. Pelicoff is, uh, Mrs. Uh, Marsha Pelicoff is lives. And I have a uh, kind of a catty corner view of his house and backyard. And everything that has been said about the differences of the fence on Line Avenue and the difference between a residential neighborhood like ours. Our neighborhood is like a, it's residence and it's like a park almost. And uh, in January, Mr. Henderson suggested put an eight foot steel fence. In one of the pictures we saw, I believe it might've been a steel fence. That's not attractive at all in a residence, residential neighborhood. Um, I understand Mr. Henderson's concerns. And as far as him saying he has a trailer, I've never seen a trailer in the backyard, but maybe he has one recently, but with a wide gate, you can get a trailer in his yard. He does have a large backyard and a lot of the yard is, um, if it goes as far as he wants it to, it would be a huge yard that I, I just don't understand why this keeps being rehashed because in January, I thought that the uh, members said that they would work with him and come up with something comparable or different. And it didn't seem like anything was said differently. I may be wrong, but anyway. Um, to your, I, your point, I guess he was offered, offered several options. And that's what's on the screen now, the different colored options. Uh, but it, it's up to him to either continue to ask for what he originally asked for or to to comply with uh, or, you know, to like the option. So the pink line from the back of his house is yes. what you were saying, he could build a fence there? Yes, that, that line is what he's allowed to by right. Um, okay. We agree with that one. Yes. Other recommendations made, but it, it's his, it's his right to continue to ask for uh, this variance. So that's that's why we're we have, yes, I agree that it's his right to ask for is, is anything that he wants. And I wish I wish he could have more of the yard fenced without it looking like an eyesore. And that's what we believe it would be. And um, as Stacy. Uh, mentioned, we all have, we are single women and my house in particular, I have a 100 inch wide by seven feet tall picture window. And if, if my curtains are, aren't completely closed, somebody can see straight into my house, but that's my front yard. So that may be neither here or there, but I just wanted to mention that. But I appreciate y'all letting us speak, and um, uh, I'm done. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Ms. Palmer. Anyone else wish to speak against case 2021 BAC? All 
All right, Mr. Henderson, you have a uh, rebuttal, three minutes. Yes, sir. Um, Tom Stark. Yes. The picture, some of the pictures again are these neighborhoods that we live in has fence <laughs> from the side of his house out to the street, going down the side of the street before the asphalt, and that's a six foot fence. There's several houses like that in this neighborhood, not on the main street. In fact, one is on Midville, and that's the same side street. And if, I don't know if the guy that gave the overview of a line Avenue, Ontario, went out there to look at it, but I believe that fence go all the way down, down this property, not the concrete, but the other does. The concrete just closed it to the back. That's it. I'm asking for the same thing. I want my whole property to be closed in, just like the orange line was. I want to protect my family. I want to protect the neighborhood. That's it. It's not asshole. I keep my grass cut. When I look out across the street, if I want to take a photo out, right now that grass is a taller than 18 inches. It had been cut since probably, I don't know, in a long time. But it's not grass growing season. I hadn't cut my yard since the summer and it hadn't grown in. So I want to look nice. I want to be able to do things. I take care of my property. I'm not trying to hinder the neighborhood. I'm trying to upbuild it. People stop all the time and tell me the good job that I do taking care of this property. I'm not trying to hurt the neighborhood. I can do something different with the front, but I'm asking at least from the side down, uh, from the side of the house, down Midville that I can enclose that. I can do something different with the front. I'm done. All right, thank you, Mr. Henderson. Comments from the board? All right. All right, what do we hear? Uh, move to deny. Uh, if you go on record, Mr. Moss, uh, just give us a brief, uh, a, a bit of uh, rationale for that. Moving to now, basically, we, we're given some options here, and we gave we, we gave that explanation for the so for, for one of the lots, but uh, by looking at this drawing here, that fence is going to be high, very high. It, it's not gonna it's not gonna look nice out there. That's that's not gonna be a good look for that area right there. Now, um, if we move that fence back, and once he like you said, he he's not gonna be able to put his trailer. Uh, movie trailer back there in the back like he wants to. Um, I understand some things happen, but um, this is not going to be in compliance. And if we if we if we uh, move not to do this, then other folks in the same neighborhood don't want to do the same thing. You know, we have rules and regulations in place for a reason, and I think that uh, this board that's our job to uh, abide by them. I can't speak for those other pictures. Uh, one of the pictures we gave explanation for. But I can't speak for the other pictures because they might not be in compliance. So one thing I want to find out after this, this meeting is uh, adjourned, are those meetings, are, are those other uh, sites in compliance? And if they're not, we need to uh, send them a citation. So that's my, my, my that's my motion. That's my reason. Um, we have a second. A second. All right, it's been motion, uh, motion by Mr. Moss, second by Ms. Pearson to deny uh, application for 2021 BAC variance. Uh, we can vote now, unless anyone has a comment or discussion. Mr. Berry? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Moss? Yes. Mr. Horn? Yes. Have four yes, zero no's. And carries unanimously. I'd now like to request a motion to consider case number 21-1-BAC, variance pursuant to subject, subsection D of Louisiana Revised Statute 4217.1. As a reminder, consideration of this case in a virtual setting will require two-thirds vote and a majority vote to pass. We have a motion to consider. I make the Chair. motion. Go ahead, Huey. I just make the motion to consider this. Thank you, Mr. Horn. Case number. Okay. Second, Mr. I think they fucked up. I think they were trying. Okay, we need to we need to make sure we got the the person muted on here. Um, that was in here prior. 
It's there. He, he, he's muted now. All right, so we, uh, we've approved, uh, we need to vote for this uh, motion to consider, please. Mr. Berry? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Moss? Yes. Mr. Horn? Yes. We have two thirds. Thank you. Case number 21-1-BAC variants, FNW fabrication, 5631 Mirador Circle. Is someone here to represent this case? I believe I saw the Fords on earlier. Mr. Yeah, there you go. Yes, I'm here. Very good, Mr. Ford. You have 10 minutes. You what? I'm, You've I'm, got 10 minutes. Go ahead. Okay. What I'm asking for is approval on the placement of a boathouse that is one of my neighbors to the west has uh, apparently gotten approval or whatever to. Uh, place his boathouse pretty much in front of my projected property lines, as you can see in that photo right there. Um, I'm gonna need to, in order to be able to access it, I'm gonna need to be able to place it about where I've drawn here, uh, up next to my neighbor to the east. And it's gonna cross my projected property line and infringe on the 20 foot uh, in between boathouses ordinance, but uh, that's really the only way that we can fit it in there and make it work uh, to where I can still be able to come in from the west side and, and dock the boats. The boathouse to the west had an addition put on to his that the area you can see where there's a separation in the roof there, not that one, the next one to the right. Yes, there's a, it's that separation that his existing boathouse was there. And then that addition that you see put towards the east was put in at a later date. It even further limits, I've only got 90 feet between the two boathouses. My boathouse would, the proposed boathouse would be 34 feet, which is not gonna leave me a whole lot of room which is why I wanted to at least start, even with my neighbors, according to this drawing, at least start my boathouse where his starts. And then the I would be going out projected a little bit further. In talking with my neighbor, uh, I think he's even on here, um, I agreed with him to try to not, you know, block any more of his view than, than necessary. However, the 12 foot uh, measurement up there at the top where it says on the on the furthest most deck out there, I actually made a mistake on that when I redrew this for uh, our benefit the other day. On my original drawing, that was a 20 foot deck. But instead of going to a 20 foot deck, what I would like to do is make that a 16 and an eight and not a 12 and an eight, which would only be a four foot more uh, difference going out. The ordinances allow us to go 300 feet, but I'm trying to keep peace with the whole neighborhood and especially my neighbors I have to live with and not, you know, go out beyond where, where he and I discussed. Uh, it's really the, the best option in, in keeping everybody happy here. And the only way that I could keep this without crossing any ordinances would be coming really close to the boathouse to my west and going out even further into the lake, which like I said, 300 feet would put me out past where you see there where it says property lines at the top of that furthest T, that would probably be around 300 feet, which would be allowable if I stayed inside the property lines but I know that the neighborhood doesn't want me to do that, nor would the Lake Patrol. The Lake Patrol has already given me approval on this. They've signed off on it. My neighbor mm -hmm. signed off, I think, on the draw the other drawing you put up a while ago. Um, and like I said, the only variance of that may be in a, 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 a variation of four feet on that last deck at the, at the top. 
that I believe that's all I've got for right now. I'll be glad to ask, answer any questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Ford. Any questions from the uh, board for Mr. Ford? Yeah, uh, I had one. Yes, sir. Mr. Horn? Yes, sir. Uh, so you do have uh, permission from your neighbor on your east side to cross his property line out in the water? Yes, that was not an issue. He did request that I gave him that 15 foot space so he could still possibly pull a boat in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in between, you know, just to, to park or whatever, because as you see, he enters from the other side on his boathouse. So I'm okay. trying to make my entrances oppose his. And even though we would be close together, you know, he would still have room to put the boat in, tie a boat up in between there if need be. Okay, all right, that's all I needed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Horn. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Anyone else wish to speak for case BAC 21-1-BAC? Uh, yes, my name is John Walton. I live at 2629 Mirador Circle. Um, I am Derek's neighbor. Uh, my peer in this photo is the peer to the right. Um, I, what Derek has drawn up, my wife and I are okay with doing. It's not the best situation. Uh, and I guess we would really like to express more of our concerns. If you go back to the previous photo when he was showing uh, there, if you look, Here's my house is, my pier is the one right below where it says proposed placement, um, right there, okay? My pier really is one of the first piers that does follow where basically the property line should go out straight from your house out toward the lake. I understand that is not our property at City of Shreveport, but we stay in directly in front of our house. On the piers going back to the west, they're all, you can see them, they're all pushed out to the east and that goes over in front of somebody else's house. I'm sure when they started building them, they thought, well, I don't want to encumber, you know, have my view encumbered. I want to see the sunset. Well, so does the rest of us that live on the lake. I don't know what permits have been given. I don't know how to, you know, research this or whatever, but, you know, I, you know, I'm not trying to be a pain neighbor either, but if someone has built something that's not been approved, you know, do I really want them to take it down right now? I don't know. It's a lot of expense. But I guess what I'm asking for going forward is that this commission and the Cross Lake Patrol get on these calls together that when people have to go rebuild, and you do have to rebuild piers every once in a while, they're going to rot that they get re-approved and put their pier where it should be in front of their properties. Because as, as this keeps pinching down further going east, you see how now how close Derek and I have to be. He's been good enough to work with me on doing this and I think we're both given a little bit. But you can see how all these uh, piers um, starting basically on the, the circle there in the far bottom left corner and working Mirador Circle uh, up to the uh, northeast, you can see the piers are all pushed off to the east. And I know they can't be in front of where they're supposed to be. And as a property owner there, that you know, I'm going to resell my place one day. Uh, I would like to, whoever's going to buy it, be able to go, you know what? I, I have a view just like my neighbor does, and my neighbor's not infringing on mine. All right. Thank you, Mr. Walton. Any questions from the board? Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Clark. If you will, uh, there were a lot of questions asked of us, and I'd ask Stephen to reach out to uh, the Department of Engineering to get some clarifications on our environment and uh, what exactly it does the Department of Engineering and the Cross Lake Patrol require. If you would allow me, I'd like for him to share that information with you all. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we did contact the Cross Lake Patrol, and it, it, yes, uh, it, we did confirm the same thing. Mr. Ford had represented that he did get a, a permit uh, from the from the Cross Lake Patrol, 
as it relates to this. We, we've talked a lot in, in, in this meeting and in our, our planning meeting about projected property lines. But as was said earlier, there's really no property lines as you get into the lake. Uh, you know, how that is, is actually determined by the Cross Lake Patrol. Uh, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I, I agree with when you look at the pattern, there seems to be kind of an, a, a shift that goes along there. But I don't know if there's anything in the regulations that says exactly how that is supposed to be done and cited. I know the distance is, is in there. So uh, I talked to Mr. Clark and, and uh, you know, we can, we can continue to reach out to, uh, matter of fact, we plan on doing that is, is talk to the Cross Lake Patrol, get a better understanding of where we are in our code. But th this, this provision on the spacing was added as a part of the UDC. Uh, it was because of public comments that we received from some of the uh, uh, homeowners that were in along Cross Lake. So, but as far as we can tell that uh, in a, except for the variance that's being requested in this meeting, everything else is in compliance with the, with the, the code. And so this, all that's in front of you today is to get that five foot variance from 20 feet to 15 feet. But yes, we can continue to talk to, to the Cross Lake Patrol and coordinate. And, and Mr. Clark and I had talked about having some internal discussions on how we uh, participate in that in the future. All right, thank you, Mr. Gene. May I make a comment? Uh, please, this is John Walton again. Uh, briefly, Mr. Walton, I need I'll to move on. Briefly. I, I would just hope that we could all work together because I certainly wouldn't want to make this a PN contest, I guess, for lack of better terms, to where, okay, well, your peer's here, so I'm going to go out further with mine, and now we're really getting into a problem. Um, I wish there was some sort of uniform between this committee and the Cross Lake Patrol that we could all work together. That, that's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Barron, if you, sir, put, uh, I think that uh, if you listen carefully, uh, Mr. Walton, based on our conversation, that is what Mr. Gene and I are proposing to do is to communicate better with the, we have three other, two other departments involved in this process so that we can be a uniform permitting system so that we're all on the same page. And we accept your advice and we plan to pursue that, that avenue of, of, of communication. All right, thank you, Mr. Clark. Anyone else on the line wish to speak for case BAC, or sorry, 21-1 BAC? All right, is there anyone who wishes to speak against this case? All right, do I have a motion from the board? Uh, Mr. Chair, since um, I move to approve since Mr. Ford's neighbor seemed to be in agreement and uh, it's not gonna cause any harm to what the issues they already have going. All right, thank you, Ms. Pearson. There's a motion to approve. Do I get a second? A second. second. All right, thank you, Mr. Horn. There's no discussion, we can vote. Mr. Barry? Yes. Ms. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Moss? Yes. Mr. Horn? Yes. We have four yes to your no's. All right, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. That brings us to the end of our public hearing. Uh, do we have any old business committee chair reports? I don't believe we do. Uh, any new business or research? Not today, Mr. Chair. All right, Mr. Clark, you have a director's report you wish to give? I, I would just like to share very briefly with you that and extend the, the thanks on behalf of the staff for your participation in these virtual Zoom meetings. Uh, to an extent, they've been extremely challenging, uh, but I think we have truly gotten through them and I think it's a credit to the uh, wonderful board that you are that has allowed us to continue to provide services to the citizens without delay 
and we've had to modify procedures and uh, react to proclamations and so forth. But we really believe that possibly these uh, type meetings are behind us unless something uh, drastically happens in the very near future. So I just wanted to share that with you that uh, it has been interesting uh, uh, as we have gone through this process and compliment each and every one of you for the job that you've done throughout this process. And we look forward to possibly seeing all of you in person uh, come uh, the, the month of April. And if you're not excited, as I said yesterday, I'm extremely excited. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Do you do we know uh, what our agenda lo may look like for next month? It's a, I, we we think that there are possibly two or three cases. I, I can tell you that we are beginning to get uh, some some applications or, or, info, or inquiries in relationship to the special exception use approval that you all will be doing for beauty and barber shops and manufactured, uh, manufactured houses. Uh, so you might want to start getting yourself uh, acclimated to that process and that mindset that uh, you will no longer just be restricted to appeals and variances. Uh, this will be a lot more fun, not a lot more fun, but this will give you something different uh, to, to uh, deal with on a monthly basis that we're excited about those opportunities also. So the next couple of months, you can have some of those applications. I'm looking at Mr. Gene, he probably knows exactly how many cases you have next month. I do, we have a total of six cases next month. I know for sure that four of those six cases are signed permit, I mean, signed variances. Um, and I am not 100% of the other two, but I do know it's a total of six. All right, thank you, Mr. Gene. Mr. Clark, the, the, new, the new cases coming before us won't be nearly as much fun as alcohol and hours of operation, I'm sure. <laughs> and you know, Mr. Barry, being around during that time, I, I know exactly what you're referencing. But uh, do we have any more comments from the board? No, sure. I'd like to uh, echo Mr. Clark and thank the staff, especially Ms. Trant, for getting all my information to me for this uh, first uh First time I've chaired a Zoom uh, online board uh, ZBA meeting, and I uh, appreciate all the support that she and the rest of the staff have given me. And uh, look forward to seeing everyone in the chamber next month. Uh, if no other comments, then we are adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye.